Welcome to my Texas workshop. I'm Randy Lammers. I'm Aaron Keevan. This is Worth Knowing. Are you concerned about corrosion? That certainly is a big issue with our infrastructure and many components being manufactured today. Fasteners are a particular concern because they hold the world together. So you have a fastener failing corrosion, that's an issue. So we wanna start our series today on fastener finishes. And in particular, let's start off with electroplating. Electroplating, Aaron, is by far the predominant finish for fasteners historically, and it's that way because it does have a lot of benefits for fasteners. Yeah, it sure does, right? We've got a good thin coating that's mm -hmm. applied to that, so you're talking one and a half to five microns. That's two ten thousandths of an inch. You're talking very minimal. Doesn't that's great for the threads. Thread geometry, it's not you affected bet. as badly. So uh, another thing is that it has very good aesthetic values. Obviously, you look at these, they look wonderful. They're very yeah. shiny. We've got adequate corrosion protection. I say adequate. We can talk a little bit more about that here we in a little will. bit. And it's also cost effective. So that's a, that's a major benefit. Well, fasteners are one of the lowest cost components mm -hmm. of anything being assembled. And so you, you have to be cost competitive on the fastener finish as well. So it works very, very well for that. Um, some cons we have to be concerned with. Okay. Uh, environmental concerns. Yes. So we had some things that happened many years ago uh, that affected how, what types of uh, products we can put on top of the finish. Yeah, so that's changes that are taking place uh, in the industry today that we're working with. Right, we also have to worry about loss of corrosion protection. I know we said adequate, so uh, there's some things that we have to be concerned with there because of those changes that happened many years ago. Yes, so sometimes we're having to do additional finish on top of finish in order to combat that. Correct. Correct. So also concerns with hydrogen embrittlement. We talked about that in our previous episodes. So that's something we need to think about when we're, when we're talking about electroplated fasteners. Uh, the dog bone effect. The dog bone, I have to worry about my dog? No, 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 this is totally different, right? This is, we're talking about, it's an electrolytic process. When we take any given fastener such as this, and we actually put that in that solution, mm -hmm. you get a buildup on the ends of the fastener. So because of the electric current. Correct. Okay, strength of the current, got it. Well, we have a demonstration set up. Let's, uh, let's do some electroplating and see how this electrolytic process takes place. Let's go over to the demonstration. All right, let's check it out. Okay, Aaron, I have a very simple uh, electroplating setup here, but first, let me grab our safety glasses. Sure thing. Here you go. Thank you. Now, what we have here is a solution that uh, I made up, but first, uh, let me say that the commercial plating companies do buy their solutions. They can buy acidic solutions, and they can buy alkaline solutions. Uh, what I did, this is uh, water, of course, uh, with some white vinegar, 5% uh, acidity, also Epsom salt to carry the current with, and a little bit of corn syrup for a brightener. Sounds yeah. like a good foot bath. That's a good foot bath, <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we have two zinc anodes. Okay. So these are hooked to the red positive wire, so they get a positive charge. Then here's our bolt that we have over here. And so this is a plain steel bolt that I have uh, cleaned up. This is hooked to the, our black wire, which is our negative wire. Exactly. So what we want to do is hook these two up to, now what I came up with for a power source is just two D batteries. So again, hooked up to the positive and the negative charges. Sure. So if you want to hook those up, yeah, go ahead and handle that and do that. And I'll let you get those hooked up. Just. Uh, a lot of people use alligator clips here. I didn't have alligator clips, so we just use some wire nuts to put everything together. And we only have we only have the two D batteries. Uh, this is very safe. Uh, it's only what about three volts maximum, I think, going on here. So we're not really overly worried. I'll go ahead and put that down in our solution, and that'll take a few minutes. And what happens is then you so you have a a negative charge uh, on, the, on the steel, you have a positive charge on the zinc anodes, and it's a galvanic action. Sure. 
So the, uh, the negative charge then attacks the, the zinc uh, positive charge and lets go that, then they let go of the zinc, it degrades that, lets go of the zinc into the aqua solution and then the positive and negatives attract and gets deposited onto the steel. That's electroplating kind of in a nutshell. So that'll take a few minutes to let that work. In the meantime... And that's a pretty good example of what type of plating process here. This, oh, this would be a rack plating. Uh, thank you for mentioning that because I do want to mention fasteners are bulk processed. So the vast majority of fasteners are done in a barrel. So they will give the negative charge to the entire barrel when they put that into the positive charge solution. Now, sometimes you get the fasteners that are too big for the barrels, then they'll do a rack system, kind of what we're demonstrating here, and that entire racking will then get that negative charge. What I wanna go ahead, while that's kind of working, let's just go ahead and, and move forward. And I wanna to point to this. This is one I did earlier. This is just a, a square head set screw. And this is what zinc looks like coming out of the solution. It's just kind of a dull, you can see that's fully coated with zinc. Yeah. Now, however, I want you to pay attention to this part. This part right here, you see that white powder? Matter of fact, I left some a little bit right here. You know what that white powder is? That's zinc oxide. That is zinc oxide, because this is what happens. Zinc is a sacrificial material. As the environment attacks the, the zinc, it oxidizes. So when you see this powdery, white powdery substance, that's zinc oxide. And as the zinc continues to oxidize and it's taken away, then eventually it's uh, sacrificed enough that then the environment attacks the iron in the steel. So when you see red rust that we're pretty see, we see all the time in corrosion concerns is red rust, that is now the environment attacking the iron and that's iron oxide. So that's the corrosion mechanism of zinc plating. So again, that's depositing zinc onto that bolt and you can kind of see the bubbles in there. And so that's electroplating in a very simplistic understanding of it. Okay, Aaron. So we have applied our zinc on our fastener. We saw a little concern there with uh, oxide. Mm -hmm. There are other substances you can uh, put on fasteners, other metallic products, we see a lot of that, but zinc by far is the predominant one being used for fasteners, uh, but it will oxidize. So what do we do? We put a chromate passivate, over, a layer over the zinc to protect it. Now we call it a passivate because it does interact with the zinc layer and create a passive surface, but it also creates a barrier on the exterior. And so that protects it and from the environment. So it comes in different colors. Yeah. And historically we've used hexavalent chromate and it's come in colors anywhere from clear to yellow to black to olive drab. And they have different corrosion resistance baked on, based on the makeup that, that chromate and hexavalent and its color. So you wanna talk about the ASTM specs? Yeah, so we've got uh, the ASTM spec for electroplating for fasteners is F1941. We've mentioned that in some previous episodes. Okay. And then the metric equivalent would be ISO 4042. Correct. And the way we think about this is that we've got, you obviously see some different colors here. You mm -hmm. see a clear, that's a, a zinc clear trivalent actually, all the way to this uh, hexavalent yellow. Mm -hmm. So those are all designated within those standards. Correct. And those actually have a little bit different corrosion protection. So we go from a clear, which is 24 hours. Right to rust all the way up to 72 hours to rust. Correct, correct, or even up to 96. Up to 96. And we talk about that in salt fog hours. That's right. So uh, talk about the salt fog hours correct. that we're talking that's, about. So that's an accelerated salt fog test. It's done at the plating company. Correct. So they will take their batch of fasteners after processing mm -hmm. and put that in a neutral salt fog chamber. Right. They'll figure out how many hours it takes to get to white rust and also to red rust. That's an accelerated test. An accelerated test. So that doesn't mean that's what's gonna happen out there in environment, because it depends on what your environment is. So it's a comparison test. Find out what hours of salt fog accelerated test works in your equipment, in its environment, and then we run tests to what you specify for a comparison. Exactly. So that's what that is. So those hours, we're looking at about 24 hours for the clear, all the way to about 96 hours for the yellow per the ASTM ISO specifications. Now, that's really, really great, and that's been the world for many, many, many years. 
So have you ever had something and you didn't know how great it was until you lost it? Oh yeah. Let me tell you what happened. So hexavalent chromate, we had something there we didn't really appreciate. Think about this. Hexavalent chromate had a unique property. Now, when we process fasteners, they're bulk. We do this in large bulk quantities. So they come out of the plating line and they go into packaging. And they go into metal bins and they go into packaging equipment and they get put in boxes or bags. And then we truck them across the country. And this takes place. And off they go to who knows where until they reach our warehouse somewhere. So now we're taking scoops, we're taking them out, we're repackaging them, and we're shipping them across the country again. Do you think that that had an opportunity to micro scratch that finish? Uh, just a little bit. You bet it did. So the hexavalent chromate would just whew, seal right back over itself. Now think about this. If I scratch my skin, because that's my first layer of protection against the environment, right? If I scratch my skin, what does it do? Self heals, heals it itself. Self heals itself. If it didn't self heal itself, the atmosphere would get in there and you know, I'd start corrode. So self healing properties are extremely important. We didn't really appreciate it until we didn't have it anymore. So now we had something happen that changed the world. Right, July of 2006, the EU set out mandates that restricted using hexavalent chromium. And that took it off the, the market, not off the market, but definitely made a, an impact on the industry and how we're supposed to it did. do this. It did, so the world changed, my friends. So this started out for the electronic, uh, electrical, Industry, it has now grown to other industries and anyone who's environmentally conscious because the hexavalent chromate is a carcinogenic and it's got concerns in the environment. So therefore then they said, what do we do now? Well, we had a chrome three molecule. So hex is a chrome six molecule. Trivalent chromate is a chrome three molecule. It's not as hazardous. And we had it on the shelf because it has superior qualities to thermal shock. And so we said, all right, let's put this on there and we'll be more environmentally conscious. And we did that. Now, let me tell you a story of what took place. We made this change for one of our customers and they then started complaining about corrosion happening on their fasteners. So we did this test. We had the plating company uh, run, a, run a lot uh, wrapped samples in toilet paper, shipped it to the home office of our customer. We then followed the rest of the, of the batch all the way through all of the process, the warehousing, multiple shipments into the customer. The customer then took their metal scoops, which we get this all the time, metal scoops, scooped them up, put them in a plastic bag, shipped them up to the home office. They put that in the salt fog chambers you talked about. Yep. And what we found is the ones wrapped in toilet paper met the 96 hour requirement. The ones that came from the plant after handling failed in eight hours. That's a huge difference. And the reason was handling. That's that. You lost, you lost your self-healing. We lost the self-healing properties. And so the corrosion came in and the white rust started. So the chromate is critical, critical, critical to the first layer of protection. So once you lose your chromate, then the zinc starts to sacrifice itself until it's gone. And then the environment then attacks the iron in the steel. So that's a mechanism. So chromate is of particular concern with the fastener finishes. So then we came up with then, let's put a sealer on top. So then we've added a sealer, now a third layer of protection. Now these are silica-based sealers, and the idea there is that they're hard and they're more scratch resistant. And we found that that works very, very well depending on the geometry of the part, depending on the packaging and the handling, what we're finding for a lot of fasteners, that works well. The extra sealer also gave us a lot of extra corrosion protection. So there is a lot going on in electroplating on fasteners. So in conclusion, the world has been turned upside down 
on electroplating due to environmental concerns in hexavalent chromate. So a lot of customers are trying to figure out what to do. There's a lot going on here. Right, yeah, so uh, definitely have to be aware that if you're using a hexavalent chromate, you have to know if it's restricted where you're using it at. That is correct. And you've got a loss of corrosion protection because of that. So if we're, you've had to make a switch to trivalent, you may have to do some things to overcome and, and actually make for Put that additional sealer protection. on there exactly that we talked right. about. Absolutely. Uh, the concerns with hydrogen embrittlement. So we covered that in our previous season. A great episode to learn a lot more about that. Yes. And then the dog bone effect. Don't hurt my doggy. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that, right? <laughs> so yes, the strength of the current out there on long length parts, you build up extra plating there. Exactly right. The advantages, it's yeah. an extremely thin coating. You're talking two up to two ten thousandths of an inch, very thin, so it's not going to have too much geometric effects on Excellent the Excellent for threaded fasteners. Exactly right. Uh, good aesthetic values. Mm -hmm. Looks great. Mm -hmm. You know, I love looking at that stuff. So, uh, and also it's adequate cor corrosion protection. Again, depending upon your application. Depending upon your application. So. Electroplating is by far an excellent finish. Cost-wise, it's very cost-effective for threaded fasteners. Is it right for your application? Due to environmental concerns, the world of electroplating is changing. However, it's still a viable fastener finish, and that is definitely worth knowing. We'll see y'all next time.